my showcase presentation is going in on one of the challenges that I personally enjoyed in the Talent Gateway, uh, the hats we wear. And this is going to go a little bit into what are some of these hats and why they're important in regards to student leadership, which is a topic that I'm very interested in. Um, starting with a little bit of background about myself, as Lori said, I am a senior majoring in instructional technology. I also work in the student advising and resource team on campus, so I work with START. Uh, I am also a tutor for the social sciences department, and I'm also a co-founder of Peer Advisors for Leadership and Success, which is a peer advising program founded by START within the last year. So some of the points of discussion today are, when I say the hats we wear, what exactly does that mean? How did I learn to wear them? And how does this help me in the future? How did Talent Gateway help me hone these skills? Um, so what exactly do I mean, the hats we wear? Uh, there's an article written by a man named Kevin Eikenberry that outlines the 10 different hats that all good leaders wear. These hats are that of a coach, a facilitator, a strategist, a visionary, a change agent, a decision maker, an influencer, a team member, a delegator, and a listener. The Challenge in Talent Gateway asks you to reflect on some of these hats, which ones you think you wear well, which ones you think you can improve on. Um, he also has this quote to end off the article of, the purpose of identifying these hats is to understand the roles well enough that when you're given a role and wearing a given hat, you can be more effective because you're more aware of what is needed at that moment. Um, this virtual showcase is proof of that. Adaptability is something that we all need to develop. It's going to help you in any aspect of life. Excuse me. Um, so how did I learn the hats that I wear? During the presentation, I outlined these as my three most important qualities, like the hats that I wear best, that of a facilitator, that of a listener, and that of a team member. Uh, in my role as a facilitator, one thing that I did is I led on-campus presentations through PALS, the Peer Advisors for Leadership and Success. We have a workshop series called PACS, Peer Advising Crash Courses, that we ran throughout the fall semester of last year in order to help students become more familiar with some of the university systems and that transition to university life. Um, I was also one to hold the biweekly meetings with all of my coworkers. I would run these meetings and maintain notes in order to have an accurate representation of what we talked about and facilitate the discussion to make sure that everything was going well. Um, delegating group projects, I like to find everyone's strengths and help them play upon those. So by working with others and understanding what their strengths are, the group as, in, as a whole, will improve. Uh, another thing it would be as a listener. So for PALS, working with students one-on-one -on -one is one of the main components of the peer advising program on campus. So I would have sit-down meetings with students where we could talk about anything from how to use a university system to um, going over their academic performance and seeing what changes that they can make in their lives to have a better academic success rate. Uh, success is something very important to us in the office and we wanna make sure that students can capitalize on their resources available to them. Uh, by actively listening to them, you want to make sure that you let them lead the conversation, working with them to understand where they come from. Because at the end of the day, knowing that you're dealing with another person is going to help benefit everyone as a whole because everyone has their own backgrounds. There's not a one, one size fits all solution to help all students. You need to understand the tools in which everyone has to offer. Lastly is that as a team member, when working in a team, I always try to put my best self forward and become self-motivated. Without that, you would be dragging down not only yourself, but the people around you. And that's something that we all wanna to try to avoid whenever possible. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're taking roles suited to your strengths. So, as I've previously discussed, I work really well when I can help facilitate and guide people as opposed to taking a more passive role. And then the golden rule of all teamwork is treat others how you wish to be treated to make sure that everyone is getting the same experience. So the big picture and understanding your hats, how exactly does this work? Um, the Talent Gateway, we have the three 
different sections, personal, academic, and career competencies. So personally, if you're able to understand what your strengths are, you'll be able to more consciously make efforts to build upon those strengths every day. Academically, if you have a strong foundation in leadership, you're going to sow the seeds for academic success and work towards those goals earlier and earlier and have a much stronger outcome. Lastly, in a career, Talent Gateway has given me the opportunity to explore some of the soft skills that are necessary in the job market, such as creativity, innovation, adaptability, communication. All of these are signs of not only a good leader, but a good worker, a good employee, and at the end of the day, just a good person. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to challenge everyone to think about what hats do you wear? How do you do it best? What are going to be the highlights that you leave behind and the impressions that you leave on the people around you based in your leadership and based in the way that you carry yourself. And thank you all for coming.